This is the third and final video in the coronavirus information campaign. In this video, we'll dispel some of the common myths and misconceptions about the virus, as well as address the growing problem of racism in response to its spread. Almost all media outlets have extensively covered the spread and impact of COVID-19. Television, radio, newspapers, and online news sources. It's also a major topic of discussions on social media platforms, with large amounts of information circulating on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and other internet sites. And it's frequent topic shared through text messages and emails with our communities and between families and friends. Not all of the information circulating about COVID-19 is accurate. Some of it is useless and some of it is actually harmful. So, it's important to separate fact from fiction. Since its outbreak, the spread of COVID-19 has been a catalyst for racist attacks against Asian Americans across the United States. Many have been victim of racial slurs and have even been physically assaulted. The result of fear-mongering through some online news sites and uh, social media like Facebook and Twitter has harmed many innocent people. The use of racially charged labels like the Wuhan coronavirus or Chinese coronavirus by certain public figures has also increased the risk of racist attacks on Asian Americans. On the surface, these labels don't seem harmful. However, they are broad generalizations that group a lot of individuals into a category with negative connotation. Imagine if a different virus started in the United States, and then the news declared that a hundred people had died from the America virus. People would probably be upset at the naming convention. Frankly, using these labels is a childish way to deal with a complicated issue. Unfortunately, these stereotypes developed as a result of COVID-19 have actually led to physical violence in some cases. So, what can you do if you see someone being verbally or physically attacked? First, it is important to assess if you feel comfortable interfering with the conflict. Second, attempt to understand the context of the situation and defuse the conflict. Racist attacks are intended to harm their victims, so even verbal attacks can lead to an escalating conflict, resulting in physical attacks. So, diffusing the conflict is key to preventing a physical attack. You can help diffuse the situation by staying calm and not talking with the attacker or engaging them directly. This will help remove one side of the conflict and can often de-escalate the attack. If things get too heated, help the victim get to safety. You can do this by either escorting the person to a safe space or, in some cases, calling the authorities if the conflict looks like it's escalating into a physical altercation. One of the common myths about the COVID-19 pandemic is that younger people aren't at risk. Well, it is true that older people, especially those over 70 or people with chronic health issues or compromised immune systems, are at risk. People of all ages can be infected by COVID-19. And what's more, while people in these at-risk groups are more vulnerable to becoming severely ill with the virus, People at least as young as 17 have died after contracting the virus, and many more of all ages have needed hospitalization and have had severe respiratory issues. Although the numbers vary, after recovery, 20 to 40 percent of these people will likely carry some lung damage through the rest of their lives. So, it's important to take precautions and treat COVID-19 as a potentially serious health risk, no matter what age you are or how healthy you feel. Do not let the improbability of severe symptoms create an impression that you may do what you want. Although you may not die, even feel anything from COVID-19, people who you are in contact with may suffer from COVID-19. Many people are looking for drugs or vaccines that can either treat or prevent COVID-19. Drug companies and medical research institutions are experimenting with different drugs for treatment and are in the process of developing a vaccine, but there is no easy answer for either treatment or prevention at this time. A vaccine is likely more than a year away and won't be available until sometime in 2021 at the earliest. However, these estimates are still developing. 
There are a host of drugs or home remedies that some people are promoting as a cure for the disease caused by COVID-19, but these claims are false. In some cases, the use of these drugs or home remedies have needlessly caused deaths of people who believed the false claims and took them to cure themselves of the virus. Some specific treatments are under investigation and will be tested through clinical trials, but even these need to be administered by a doctor in strictly controlled doses, different for each patient, to make sure that the drug does not harm the patient. Unless your doctor has prescribed the use of a drug to treat COVID-19, do not take any drugs or home remedies. The use of over-the-counter drugs such as analgesics, actaminophen, paracetamol, or ibuprofen can provide relief from some milder symptoms. Remember, if you have a fever with either cough or shortness of breath, you should contact your doctor to see if you should be tested. Don't forget to call them first and find out what special precautions you should take to prevent accidentally infecting others. As most people have been forced to stay at home due to COVID-19, work and school has been moved to the house. However, this still leaves plenty of extra time, and not being able to see friends may create a lack of direction. The extra time afforded may allow us to pursue online learning or hobbies, projects that you may have not gotten around to, allowing you to pursue your interests. Find time to interact with your friends online. Um, most important is to maintain a normal schedule and routine. If you set objectives for yourself throughout this time, you may avoid the dread that comes with prolonged isolation. Staying healthy through exercise during this time is also necessary, so try to use the equipment that you have or you can ship online. Panic buying is the phenomenon where people buy large amounts of a certain product, which in this case is toilet paper, sanitary products, and food in the face of danger. Panic buying is often unreasonable, hence the panic part, and purchasing more than you'll reasonably consume in the period that you plan to go shopping in creates both spoiled food and supply issues in markets for the people that actually need supplies. If you can, do not support people who choose to purchase products with the intent of price gouging. Price gouging is purchasing a product at a low price, then proceeding to sell it when the product is out of stock at a high price. And price gouging is detrimental to many people. Thank you for watching our three-part video series, Coronavirus Information Campaign. Remember, you should stay up to date on the latest guidance from health experts. For more information, please visit the website for the Centers of Disease Control or the World Health Organization. Links in the description below.